People's Court this afternoon, 4.30. Didn't Chad say he'd be here in 15 minutes? Uh, just a few minutes late. Do you want another drink? No, no, I want to have a clear head for this meeting. Here he is. Hello, Chad. Doctor, Mrs. Cavanaugh. Thank Hello, you Chad. for joining us on such short notice. Here, sit down. Do you want a drink? Thank you. Uh, no, thanks. <clears throat> I think I can guess the reason for your invitation. Yes, it's about Jody. But primarily because I'm taking her to Raleigh Castle for Eden's Tri Centennial. Look, we don't mind telling you, we're, we're very nervous about this, very worried. Well, under the circumstances, I can understand that. Did Jody also tell you that Miles and I will be going? Yes, she mentioned it. Not as her chaperone, so that's what you're thinking. No, I didn't think that was the reason. Although, I'll bet Gavin is glad to hear it. Yes, well, Gavin is as deeply concerned about this as we are. I'm sure you know that. And I think you know what happened to Jody the first time she met one of your fellow countrymen. Yes, I certainly do. Jody will never forget it. Chad, there is so much mystery surrounding this whole weekend at Raleigh Castle that we don't know what Jody is headed for, but we want to. Mrs. Cavanaugh, I think... Chad, this isn't just a simple weekend outing in the country, is it? Can I ask you a question? I want a direct answer. I think I can promise you that. Is there an event that you're planning for this festival that isn't listed on the program? And does this event have something to do with Marie Bonaventure? Yeah, Troy, what's up? Well, I'm out in the street doing my job, like you told me to. What does that mean? I know where Jody Travis is right this second. She's upstairs in some kind of a, a studio. All right, hold it. Take it easy. Calm down now. Let me arrange, take care of the little police protection I was talking about. Look, you told me to call you when I thought the time was right. Well, that's what I'm doing. Okay, yeah, fine. All right, tell you what. Give me the address. Where you at? Okay, I got it. That's in Midtown, right? Are you calling from a phone booth? Give me the phone number there. 3642. All right. Now, listen to me. You hang around that place. Don't move. When you hear the phone ring twice, I'm going to make it ring twice, then it's okay for you to make your move. You got that? Hey, Mr. Lorimer, are you sure you want me to put some hurt on this little girl? Look, how about, how about I just scare her a little? Huh? Listen, punk, you ain't being paid for coming up with ideas. You understand? Now, listen, you just do what you're told. You got one shot with me, and that's it. If you don't do what you're told, you're going to wind up on the street. You got that? Goodbye. Edge of Night is brought to you by Dawn, 
the dishwashing liquid that takes grease out of your way. And by Zest, the deodorant bar that leaves no sticky soap film so you feel really clean. Hey, Bobcats, bet you can feel cleaner without soap. Feel cleaner? Come on, man. Without soap? When you discover the cleaner feeling of Zest, you're gonna say no to yourself. Zest lathers up pretty good. Smells good, too. Hey, doesn't mean we'll feel cleaner. Yeah. Okay, you've got soap on one arm. Put deodorant zest on the other. Check out these bubbles. Now rinse. Hey, guys, soap feels tacky. Zest rinses cleaner. Feels cleaner. All right. Discover the cleaner feeling of zest. You're gonna say no to your soap. And yes to zest. Get out of here. My mom always says... A penny saved is a penny earned. Right. So I save pennies with this bargain liquid. A bargain is no bargain if it doesn't do the job. So I'll use more. Waste not, want not. Dawn handles more grease for the money. Are you sure? Am I your mother? Look, I've washed a sink full of greasy dishes in this average bargain liquid and Dawn. Now watch. I'll dip two clean plates. The bargain plate looks greasy. Not Dawn. Dawn stands up to grease, keeps it away from dishes. Dawn does handle more grease for the money. Dishes look great. Even my hands don't feel greasy. They'd look even better with a wedding ring. Next time, call. Dawn, handle more grease for your money. You haven't exactly answered our question, Chad. Are you planning some kind of a political event at this tricentennial? Something involving the martyr? Well, I wouldn't be surprised if there was some event involving Marie Bonaventure. She's our national heroine. Just as children in Switzerland grew up with the legend of William Tell, the children of Eden grew up with the legend of the martyr. Yes, Chad, we know that. What we don't know is, is Jody going to be involved in this event in some way? Well, what do you mean? Oh, please, Chad, just tell us, are you involving Jody in some sort of an event Excuse that me, is... has Jody told you something more? Well, she made a little slip of the tongue that makes us kind of think you know more about what's going to go on up there than you're admitting. And we also believe that you know the real reason that Jody was kidnapped. All right. I do know that she was abducted because these rebels, Pietro and Viva, mistook her for the descendant of Marie Bonaventure. You believe that she was mistaken for someone else? Yes, I do. They wanted to make that old prophecy of a savior come true. How do you know what they wanted? You knew Viva and Pietro, didn't you? Before they kidnapped Jody. Well, yes, a little. I mean, I saw them around campus at Monticello University a few times, but obviously I was opposed to what they were doing. Listen, Chad, I don't think it's possible to be polite about this. So I'm just going to say it right out. I think you're lying. I think if you were opposed to the events of the past few weeks, you'd never be taking Jody to this festival. You'd be trying to keep her safe, protected from whatever is going to take place up there. But Jody's going with you because she happens to know you're a sympathizer. Why don't you admit it? You want me to tell you I'm my father's enemy? No. We just want you to admit that you are an enemy of injustice. <sighs> Please, I can't Chad, talk listen, about we this. We know how much this must mean to you. Or at least we can try to guess. We don't want to interfere with your plans. Jody's already expressed her willingness, to, more than her willingness, her determination to help you. And I don't think we can change her mind. All we are saying is that she is our number one priority. We want her to be safe and protected, and we're afraid she won't be. Do you understand me? We are afraid. I have no idea how to read this thing, but I am sure it is astronomical. Oh, I think my eyesight is going. Oh, that's a bad sign. I just know it is. I need rest. Lots of rest. My will. I never made out a will. My mother said, Vinci, everyone has got to have a will. I'll talk to Cliff. Oh. I'll leave my grandfather clock to Dee Dee. And the kids. I'll leave the kids to Cliff. No, I'll give them to Sid. I think Cliff would rather have my record collection. He's borrowed half of it already. And my autograph picture of Betty Davis, I'll give to Jim Dedrickson. Yeah, that'll be nice. Oh, we ain't got a barrel of money. Maybe we're again funny, but we'll travel along, singing a song. Side by side. No. <laughs>
<laughs> What's the matter? Not even a smile? I'm deathly ill, my darling. Oh, don't you feel any better? I have a dreadful cold, my darling. Oh, well, then, you don't mind if I just sort of shake hands hello? <laughs> What's all this my darling business? Oh, I've been rehearsing lines from a play that used to start to Lula Bankhead. It's the first time my voice has ever been deep enough for the part. Actually, I think you sound a little bit more like James Earl Jones. Want to try a little Othello? No. I want to hear all about your dinner with Jody. Was it nice? Did you miss me? Considering you're cold, you were much better off here. And besides, Jody wasn't even there. How come? Well, she said she wanted to be alone and went home. I tried to get my brother Troy to join us, but he ran off suddenly. So, Cliff and I spent the entire evening boring each other to tears, swapping courtroom stories. Well, that's funny. I wasn't bored at all with my courtroom stories. Huh. So, where's my surprise for Sage? I'm starving. Oh, uh, 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 we, didn't, we don't have any. Uh, Dee Dee oh. forgot it. Oh, honey, I'm so sorry. We both forgot. The evening was such a fiasco. Boy, a fine couple of friends you guys turn out to be. I mean, don't you know you're supposed to feed a cold? I can just see it. If it's disease doesn't finish me off, starvation will. Which reminds me, Cliff, I need to talk to you about my will. Oh, I think we ought to solve your problem about dinner first. Ah, problem solved. I will go and get you something. No, Dee, you can't go out alone at this hour. Well, then I'll go out and get you. And it's you something. can't go out alone. What do you mean by that? Uh, problem solved again. We will both go out together. Ah, the wisdom of Salome. Solomon, try to cling on to life a little longer, Mitzi. We'll be right back. You sure it wasn't Salome? No, Solomon. You say Solomon, I say Salome. Solomon, Solomon. <laughs> no matter what you may have thought of him in life, my darling, remember. This was a man. Food. Oh, cutting. Hi, sweet stuff. <laughs> Announcing Frito's brand lights. A remarkably light, crispy corn chip. Fritos brand lights. Same great taste as Fritos corn chips, but lighter, crispier, incredibly munchable. Fritos lights. The great taste of Fritos corn chips in crispy new Fritos brand lights. Introducing a camera. Come on, Dad. So easy to use, it lets you picture life. You can do it. That's it. Come on now as quickly as it happens. This unique film disc and the new Kodak disc camera with automatic advance let you take a picture every half second. Come to Dad. For a moment this precious, you need a camera this fast. The new Kodak disc camera. You can't come in here. Well, but I'm already in. Look. See? <laughs> Oh, what's the matter? The baby don't feel good? No, I'm sick. I am very, very sick. As a matter of fact, I am highly contagious. Oh, you certainly are, honey. I mean, <laughs> I am a walking mass of bacteria. And it could turn into the bubonic plague, so you just better get out of here. Well, now, don't fret, honey. I am immune to everything but you. <laughs> Uh, listen, I, uh, I just happened to be in the neighborhood, so I thought I would drop in and uh, say hello. Uh, listen, I brought you a present, an exquisite box of chocolates. Uh, make you feel better. I can't accept that. Well, why not? Because I, I also have hypoglycemia. Oh, well, listen, I can take whatever, you know, whatever ails you, baby. No! No, you just hold it right there. My roommate is in the other room, and my boyfriend is going to be back any minute, so you just better get out of here. <laughs> hey, oh, listen, that's very funny. You know, I could swear that I just saw your boyfriend and your roommate leave just now. You know, we have finally got a chance to be alone. Why are you doing this? Doing what? I, I haven't done anything yet. Why are you pursuing me like this? Every time I turn around, you're there. 
I get phone calls day and night. Night and day at my home and my place of business. So? Uh, what's wrong with that? I haven't given you permission. That's what's wrong with this. I have told you a hundred thousand times I am not interested. Oh, hell. Happens to me all the time. Just when I find a girl, she's not interested in me, and I am. And then, uh, just when she gets interested, I lose interest. Well, I'm not interested in your interest either. Uh, well, that's just what I'm trying to tell you. You see, the more you resist me, the more irresistible you become. So if you want to get rid of me, stop resisting me. Stop it! Uh, hey, now listen, no biting this time, okay? This is illegal. You know that, don't you? Well, I don't see any cops around. <laughs> hey, hey. Hello? Oh, hi, hi. This is Dee Dee there. This is Calvin. Calvin, I have never been so happy to hear from you in my entire life. Oh, well, thanks. That's nice. Hold on a minute. It's for you. Me? You. Uh. <laughs> uh, hello? Hello, who's this? Uh, this is Gunther Wagner. Uh, who's this? Uh, this is Detective Calvin Stoner of the Monticello Police Force. That was a cop. I told you there was a cop around. You know, all I wanted was a little bit of your time, not some uh, stupid cop. Oh, yeah. I thought we were eating in. <laughs> we are now. All I have is cold fried chicken. Too bad we can't refry it. Well, I do use Crisco oil. It'll soak up more oil. Won't it taste greasy? <laughs> we'll see. Good so far. Mm, it's fantastic. Now, aren't you glad we ate in? No. Crisco oil with no cholesterol makes fried foods that taste delicious, not greasy. Hot out of the oven, homemade cookies. You're gonna love making chewy, gooey cookies with Duncan Hines Cookie Mix. Fun bacon cookies that are chewy, gooey, homemade good. Oh, we love to mix them, love to bake them, love to eat them. Duncan Hines is chewy, gooey, homemade good. Duncan Hines Cookie Mix. Chewy, gooey. Homemade good. Brutus walked me through the mud in white pants, and I'm out of bleach. Use mine, Sue. So liquid bleach. This bleach will clean that muddy dirt better. Sue doesn't know she's getting Biz Bleach. Biz is bleach, plus energized cleaners liquids don't have. They're so white uh -huh. and bright. What was that bleach? Biz Bleach. Biz is bleach? <gasps> I better get some. Or a smaller dog. <laughs> discover Biz Bleach. And discover a cleaner, whiter wash. Speedy Kitty, chestnut Philly, three-year-old. What kind of a horse? What kind of a tip is Rocky giving me here? This horse couldn't win a race if they put 5,000 diet pills in its oats. I don't believe this. Look at this garbage. Hey. Hey, Loomis, I've been waiting for you. Where you been? I've been trying to call you. Every time your line was busy. Hey, we've been busy here, too, and I've been on the phone trying to reach you. Huh? Now, listen. I got Troy hanging around a phone booth waiting for a call. What? What's up? He's got this uh, Jody Travis chick pinned down. She's in some studio in Midtown. It's a place called... Uh, Dietrich's in Drama Studio. You ever hear the joint? Yeah, I know where that is. It's right down the street from Sid's Tavern. All right, so what are you waiting for? Get over there. He's not going to make a move on this chick until I give him a call and give him the signal. Anything you say, Eddie. And listen, just one thing. Make absolutely sure nobody sees this kid. I don't want any witnesses coming up with a description that contradicts yours. And another thing. I don't want this kid to spend any time in the can. No 20 years without a radio. You understand? Eddie. You don't have to worry about a thing. Be seeing you.
once I built a railroad, now it's done. Brother, can you spare? Hey, how you doing? Hi, anybody call? No, you know, but I made a call and got a real funny answer. Oh? Yeah, call Didi, right? Now, Mitzi answers the phone. She sounds peculiar, and she says, Calvin, I've never been happier to hear from you in my whole life. Then I'm just about to say thank you, and all of a sudden she gives the phone to somebody else, and this guy gets on the line. I realize I'm talking to Skylar Whitney's chauffeur, Gunther Wagner. Peculiar, huh? Yeah. <sighs> my friend, you have gone away to another part of the forest again. You are listening to my curious anecdote. Hmm? Oh, yeah, well, I heard you. Gunther answered Mitzi's phone. Yeah. You know, this, um... This moping around, just because Jody's going off to the Eaton Tricentennial for a teeny little weekend, is beginning to become something of a bore. Look, Calvin, I don't want you to force anything, but what do you think of my idea about a cop going up there and keeping an eye on her? Hmm. Well, I'll tell you. I'm going to do better than that. I'm going to try and get and go up there myself. Detective Calvin Stoner in Poison. <laughs> oh, that would be absolutely terrific, Calvin. It would make me feel a lot better about everything if that were possible. I, I, it's probably going to cost you, but uh, I've been trying to tell you all along what a terrific guy. Well, maybe I'll start to believe it. <laughs> Hello. Calvin, it's Jody. Is Gavin there? Oh, yeah. Sure, honey. Hold on. Uh, pretty little lady for you. Jody, where are you? I'm at Jim's studio, uh, alone. Uh, I guess so. Kevin, are you still mad at me? Of course not. I'm not mad at you, Jody. I'm, I'm just upset at the whole situation. Look, I know it's hard for you to understand. It's just that I don't want you to do anything that's foolish and dangerous. I'm still hoping that you change your mind about going there. Have you? Kevin, I've been walking up and down the studio thinking about it and, and trying to work it out in my mind. Well, the more I think about it, the more I realize that if I, if I don't do this, then I'm just going to regret it for the rest of my life. Jody, I, honey, listen to me for one Dad, minute, will we've you? We've been over this a thousand times. I just wanted you to understand. That... Hold on a minute, will you? There's someone at the door. When the pain starts here, the pain stops here. With the buffered extra strength relief you'll find in extra strength bufferin. 1,000 milligrams of strong aspirin, the strongest dosage you can buy, combined with special protection against aspirin stomach upset. Anison and Bayer don't give protection. Regular Tylenol's not as strong and can't give aspirin doctors prefer, but extra strength bufferin does. The pain stops here with extra strength bufferin in tablets and capsules. Paula Gans, interior decorator for Endust. What do I recommend for the care of good furniture? Well, you should use spray wax, but not too often because the wax can build up. So just use it occasionally for a wax shine. But for regular cleaning, use Endust. Endust cleans dirt and dust better without smeary wax buildup because there's no wax in it. Endust leaves just a clean, natural shine. So use spray wax for occasional waxing, but use Endust for regular cleaning. General Hospital. I thought we were friends. Oh, sure we are. But just don't go getting any unfriendly ideas in that little brain of yours, because Double Cross is not a game that friends play. General Hospital. Uh, if you're looking for Dee Dee, Troy, she isn't here. I, I think she's having dinner at Sid's Tavern. No, I, I didn't come to see Dee Dee. I just dropped by to say hello. I, um, I've heard so much about you, you know. How did you know I was here? I saw you come in a while ago. Um, would you like to, to sit down? No, no thanks. Look, tell me something, Jody. You ever hurt somebody? I mean, you know anyone who'd want to hurt you back for it? That's a strange question. 
I, I don't understand what, what you mean. Look, I just want to know if you have any enemies, that's all. Well, not that I know of. Why are you asking me this? Because my sister says you are a real good kid, you know, you're kind of uh, special. Well, that's uh, it's very nice, but I don't understand what Dee Dee's opinion of me has to do with what you want to know. She's usually right about things like this. And she was right when she pegged me as a bad dude a long time ago. The only thing is, you know, I am not that bad. In fact, what I am right now is unemployed. And good night. Freeze, mugger. Monticello Police. Look, man, I didn't do anything. Look, you look, you asked the lady. No! Oh! Big news from Hostess Cakes. Now Midway's Galaxian by Coleco meets Hostess Cakes. Get $5 back when you buy Twinkies Cakes, Cupcakes, any of these Hostess Cakes, and Coleco's Galaxian, or any of these Coleco games. Save proofs of purchase and get $5 back on each. See details on specially marked Hostess packages for up to $25 back. Get Coleco games, get Hostess Cakes, and get $5 back. Kevin, I've been walking up and down the studio thinking about...